when I look back at season one of my Builder Nation, the financial side of things makes me stay awake at night. I'm struggling to sleep. I'm str- I mean, I'm not. I'm sleeping quite well, to be honest. But financially, we were shocking. And tactically, we didn't do as well as I hoped we could, especially when I dive deeper into the numbers of the last season. I feel like there was a lot we could change. So I'm doing this little mini update video where we look forward to season two. We look at the tactics I've put together. We look at the changes I've made to the staff and players, etc. So in the next video, we're just going to review season two instead of looking forward and then skipping through it. So... Yeah, expenditure of the financial screen to start a video. I mean, how much more crazy can we be? I know, I know, I know. I'm recording this on a Saturday afternoon at 1.45. I mean, I am living life on the edge. My kids are with the mother, by the way, in case people wonder like, why I'm not watching my kids in the middle of a Saturday afternoon. Um, yeah, so yeah, let's get into this. So, players' wages last season... We ended up spending 203000 I mean, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And I think this year, we're going to be about the same. About the same. We're spending about 17 k a month. 17.8k a month. That's about 100, 117. And then it's going to be about the same, I think. Uh, we'll, we will look at, obviously, our wage expenditure in a second. Staff wages is going to be dramatically lower. So, currently... Last season, we spent 172 k and currently, we spend about 7 k a month. Now, I'm hoping my wage, my contract renewal comes soon because currently, I'm on about 500 a week and we're going to dramatically drop that down, hopefully. Hopefully, we're going to work out that in a month, I'm going to earn less than what at the minute I'm earning two weeks to try to, again, cut back the expenditure. Um, everything else, we can't really affect too much in terms of all this scouting costs we could look at last year we spent seven thousand three hundred on scouting costs so far this season nothing nothing at all so summary wise going into season two we have 72k in the bank um sorry minus 72k <laughs> i wish we did have 72k in the bank minus 72k our original budget was 81k transfer budget. We now have 33. I've spent nothing. It's due to the fact that I've told them I will give them a high payout if they do well in the league and in continental competition. Because if you did watch last season's videos, we qualified for the Europa Conference League. And if you've not watched the videos, go and check out the playlist for this Builder Nation series. So wage budget wise, we are committed to spending 4.466. I think last year our committed spending was five. So we are down a little bit. We are down a little bit. Um, so, I mean, we've got to take the positives from that. Now, one of the biggest changes on the last video, we looked at our staff and we had seven staff members, I think it was, on about £500 a week. You can see now we've dramatically dropped that down. Um, we have Jonas Sapienza, who is on 350 a week. And the reason I gave him that was due to the fact that he is boosting our scouting knowledge so much. But we have actually brought in some Finnish players now um, due to him. But I'm hoping long term we can remove him because 350 a week is a lot of money. But the, the players we brought in were due to the fact of his knowledge of the nation. So it has been beneficial. Um, I did manage to, in the last episode, I said I hoped to bring in an assistant manager who could also be our head of youth. We've ended up doing it. So he's come in as our assistant manager stroke head of youth on a one-year contract. I think it will be a one-year contract, and that is due to the fact that our under-18 assistant manager, who I stumbled across just randomly due to a job advert for an under-18 assistant manager, is absolutely insane. So, long term, we are going to bring him in as our assistant manager stroke head of youth. By long term, I mean next season. Hopefully. So, he's going to have a year as our under-18 assistant. As long as nobody poaches him, we will be offering him a contract next year as our as our assistant manager stroke head of youth. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, though, we've dramatically changed things here. We've got a player goalkeeper coach who had another year left on his contract. We are going to let him go at the end of this year. Because goalkeeper-wise, coaching is not the best. And we only have two 
if we go to here, you can see we only allow two coaches. He has taken up one of them slots, which means we have one of the worst coaching teams in the division at the minute. Scouting wise, then you can see we don't have anybody. Um, so we have a recruit recruitment analysis who is actually on zero wage, and that's the only reason I've held on to him. And we have a head physio, and that's it because, well, as I said, we, we had a massive expenditure on staff. In season two, I wanted to get that as low as we could, and then we can look at building from there. But to start building, we had to cut back first. So transfer-wise, going into season two, we're going to have to go back a season first to look at some players who we brought in at the end of last season. So first off, as an option as one of our attackers, he can play on the wing, can technically play wing-back as well. Uh, Freddie Bra 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 Brasson nailed it. Um, I think he's a decent player. Technically not the best, but also not the worst. Lots of nines, eights. Um, good work rate, teamwork. So he, he does well, I think. In pre-season, he's looked fairly solid with four assists, two goals. But what you see in the matches is he is pressing a lot. He's working hard. His work rate, basically, and his teamwork, them um, attributes are really shining through. Not a bad player. Comes on a two-year deal, only £110 a week. I'm fairly pleased with that. Um, do you know, football manager, I reported this bug in beta. The fact that when you go back, it doesn't keep you on the screen you were on. Um, the next sign is our new defender stroke midfielder. Comes in as a regular starter, but he's more of a rotation option. I do have three players on my bench who are regular starter contracts. Hopefully we can rotate enough to keep them happy. But um, finished player came in due to our knowledge of Finland, due to that coach. Obviously, we've got player coach. Johannes Nordstrom. And he's 30 years old, comes on a two-year deal, £140 a week. Very, very talented player. Struggles passing-wise, and that's why I'm more thinking of him as a central defender. But he's not a bad player for this level. Really, really pleased with him. And I think he definitely op offers an option which we didn't have last season. And go back again. And the final player who came in on last year's list is a central midfielder, Elias Eriksson. Again, a regular starter who's technically a rotation option but we could only secure him as a regular starter again a two-year contract 26 years old again from finland again due to our knowledge this is why in a tips and vid tips video i released on tuesday as you see in this having a scout or a player or a coach who has knowledge of a nation can really help you pick up players on a free transfer when you're not actually paying a scouting budget at the minute and look at his mentals, work rate 16, teamwork, good determination, good bravery, and um, good stamina. He's six foot two, good personality. He just fits what I wanted, which was to add some depth of players who will work hard for the team. So the next player we're going to look at was also pre-arranged, Norwegian, 24 years old, Bessian Kadri. And again, very talented, again can play multiple positions. During pre-season, he's been our first choice right back, can play centre back, can play defensive mid, can play right wing back and central midfield. He's got better passing than the other player, that's why he's in as our first choice. And just a very solid player, £200 a week, so he's one of our highest earners now. A two-year contract, but I'm really pleased with that, I think it's a very solid acquisition. The next player to look at is someone who we did look at in the previous episode. Faro International, three caps. All of them caps came after I'd agreed to sign him. Dodgy that, right? Um, he's our first choice left back this season. I'm hoping first team exposure will help develop him. Came in on a free transfer, only £55 a week on a two-year deal. I think it was worth the punt. Acceleration and pace aren't the best. We've got him working on that now. But you can see here focuses on quickness. But... He's not a bad player. Now, this player interested me. I was short of players who could play in the central midfield attack role, but also who can play behind the striker when we switch to our second tactic, but also can be a backup as a striker. Latvian international. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Set nickname. We are going to go with... Um, Jev Kaze. Jev Kaze comes in as our backup in centre mid, attacking mid and striker. Comes as a fringe player, one year contract because he was 27 and I was 
unsure. To be honest with you, I could only see half of his attributes at the time. I did take a bit of a punt. Um, a couple of other clubs went in for him, so we had to jump in quickly. £90 a week, one-year contract, fringe contract. Jeff Kazza, very happy with him. And the final one is another player who's been, been in and around the national team, not due to me wanting to sign him, but comes in as a squad player on £100 a week on a three-year contract, 20 years old, came in the top five players predicted to be young player of the year as well this season, Noah Mneni, Mneni, Mneni. I'm not sure how we say that. It's M and N after each other. That's just to wind us up, I think. Burke can play centre back, defensive mid, and centre mid. Judy's height of five foot eleven. I think more of a centre mid option, but due to his attributes, can cover in defensive mid hundred percent. So really, really pleased that has played in the Conference League this year. Must have been for Viking uh, Gutter. He was one of their first choice players last year. Played 19 games for them. He wanted to come in early on in pre-season, but as a first choice player. So I didn't sign him. We kept going in from just sneaking around during January, February and March. And we've ended up picking him up only a couple of weeks ago on the squad player contract. And I'm really, really pleased with that. So the only players who were released was Gato, who we spoke about in the last episode. And if we go back here, you can see down at the bottom... All of these players were released, but Carlos Edwards and then the rest were pretty much just backup people who we didn't use anyway. So here you can see how pre-season went. We were very solid. We scored a lot of goals, and that actually continued to the opening game of the season, which we have played, and we picked up a 5-2 victory, scoring four goals in the first half. Now, what I would say is at half-time, I subbed all three of our midfielders because all three of them won yellow cards. And maybe we struggled in the second half early on because of all them changes, I'm not sure. But we subbed all three of them and, yeah, we basically coasted to the win in the end, scoring a, a goal there. Menendi actually with the goal. Actually, do you know what? We can look at this goal because it was an absolute beauty. And when you've scored four, you then concede. It's always nice to end up coming back and scoring this type of goal to get you the win and secure it with the fifth goal of the game. So tactically this season, we are looking at two different tactics. We're looking at our 4-5-1 with a balanced personality and uh, mentality, sorry. Um, in possession, we're slightly more direct and fairly wide, just trying to stretch the pitch a little bit more. We distribute into the centre-backs to c help help keep our goalkeeper's pass percentage up a little bit. And we are counter and counter-pressing. Due to the work rate, etc. for my players now, I feel like we can do that and we can do it well. Um, when we're out of possession, we have the mid-block. We are pressing more often and we are getting stuck in just to make sure we're not just watching passively as they control the ball. It does mean we pick up a few yellow cards. We do have to try to control that a little bit. And our second tactic is a wing-back formation. Again, with the balanced mentality, slightly more direct passing. We're working the ball into the box just to give time for players to get forward. Fairly wide again, stretching the pitch a little bit more. Again, distributing the central defenders and countering. Now, I do think we can probably look at counter-pressing as well. This tactic is more to see games out with the three at the back. But I do think we can counter-press. I think we have the players for that now. Now, out of possession, there's a few more things to look at. We have the mid-block, but we have a lower defensive line. With the three at the back, I want to just hold us that little bit deeper to stop the balls over the top. We have get stuck on, get stuck on, get stuck in. We are pressing a little bit more often as normal, but we're trapping outside and stopping the crosses. And the reason I've done that is we are playing with wide centre-backs. So we are stretching the pitch when we have the ball. And when we lose the ball, when you have three central defenders, I find they they compress really quickly. Where if you tell them to trap outside, they do hold the width just a little bit more and help out the wing back as well. So it is a really nice little little add-on to, to click there, just to just to secure the tactic. But them are our two tactics going into the second season. Them are the transfers we've made. We've not done anything with the Fairlands national team. The only thing I would maybe point out is a player who came through the youth intake of Jonas Olsen has now been promoted to the Ferraris national team because he looks high quality. I've actually been trying to sign him for Asia, but unfortunately we can't convince them 
to join us at the minute. He wants to continue his development at um, HB. And I think that's due to the fact that we don't have that reputation as a club yet, unfortunately. But as I said, I, these type of players, I would prefer to leave at these clubs and help build the nation. But first off, we need to secure our club then we can look at building the nation. But that is it. So I'm going to go into my second season as AB manager. We're going to continue as the Fair Rounds manager. We we do have the, um, what's it called? The European Championship qualifying. Group B has been drawn. And we do have a tie against our parents. So since the Fair Rounds is a Danish uh, colony. So we're going to be playing against Denmark, Ireland, Israel and Lithuania. Now, weirdly, Israel... In you know, you have your social media. They were the third most wanted team to be in our group when they asked the fans, who do you want to be drawn against? Well, you got your wish. Lithuania as well, who we've just played in the um, Nations League, and they unfortunately were a lot better than us, so hopefully we can get to better than this time. But I think it's a fun group. We don't know what's expected of us yet, but in the next video, we'll all find out together. Thank you for watching. I've been Paul, also known as the Northman, and I'll see you next time.